Hey, I'm Jake Mace again with Phoenix Longevity Arts, uh, and this is part two of our series. And in this part of the series, we're going to cover uh, self-defense techniques from the Tiger system, from the Mantis system, and from the Crane system, just showcasing some very simple and practical techniques from the animal styles of Chinese Kung Fu. So for more information, visit us at phoenixlongevityarts.com, or please like our video and give us some great feedback. Thanks. We are in part two of our series of things that everyone should know about Kung Fu. And in part two, we're going to talk a little bit about the fighting techniques of the animals. The monks of the Shaolin Temple that created the Kung Fu or that made it famous, they saw that animals had a lot of uh, fighting techniques and conditioning techniques that we as humans can bring into our, uh, our abilities and fitness training. So these are the fighting techniques of tiger, mantis, and crane, just about one of each. So a combination that we can use for the tiger is if somebody like a boxer were to do a hook punch or like a nice right cross at you. That punch comes in at your head, you might turn away and back up, but that's gonna give them better range. So when, what Tiger does is they have this wrist position where the hands are like this. They're curled in and they make the hand very strong. And we use this butt of the palm for striking into the nose, into the chin, into the temple. And it makes the hand very tough, okay? So as soon as he goes into punch, I'm going to turn and walk to the inside with my forearm. The forearms are great weapons for defense. So again, when he punches in, instead of backing away and turning away, I'm actually going to move into the punch and jam it up, okay? Walking in, then immediately turning cat right to the ear with that palm and hit him in the ear as hard as you can, okay? So again, if you're a tournament martial artist, this is not one you want to use in tournaments. They don't like the ear strike. So again, Lock in, hit to the ear, and then I'm gonna rotate, grab the hair, and try to just smash the face with the other hand. So once I hit, <laughs> smash it like that, and try to end the fight with one move. Okay, again, they punch in, I block inside, hit to the ear, smash the face this way, and we try to create some separation and distance to get away. The next animal is the praying mantis, and the praying mantis it's known for uh, pressure point hitting. So one of the points we like to hit to is the stomach nine pressure point in the hollows of the neck. There's one on this side and one on this side. So Google search stomach nine pressure point, you'll see some information. So when somebody goes into hook punch, two combination, right left combo, okay? The first combination, I do a mantis block. What I do is I take my wrist and I bend it down like this. Put your hand in a fist, stick one finger out and lock the wrist down and take this thumb and support that finger. And what this is gonna do is it's going to toughen up my forearm and create a very strong forearm for blocking and a strong wrist. So these become uh, weapons like a praying mantis, okay? Blocking in, then I'm gonna rotate and block out. So for the first punch, I block in. Second punch, I block out this way, okay? And then I have a good opening for a punch underneath or I can strike right into that pressure point of stomach nine, right to the neck with a punch a fist or a finger, if you, depending on how strong your hands are. So one more time, let's go from this thing. The same hand. They come in, good solid stance, block inside, block the temple, strike into the body, or right up into the ST9 pressure point, okay? This is really practical stuff. There's much more to Tiger and to Mantis than this. We're trying to keep this simple and practical for this video series. So the last animal we're doing is the crane. And in the crane, it's the same block. We're gonna work with the same principle. When they come in for that punch, I'm going to turn and block this way. With the tiger, I blocked in and then cat. With the crane, I can block in and then chop. So it's very close, very similar, very practical, but it uses a chop, it uses that fifth metacarpal as opposed to the butt of the palm, okay? So again, when he comes in for that punch, block this way and chop right to the neck. You can try to go for that stomach nine pressure point with the mantis use. Okay, now, one more time. Block here and strike. We may then try to grab onto a leg and press with the chest into the ground because we have a lot of rolling and groundwork in the crane that is very similar to a lot of wrestling. Even though a lot of people will say that it doesn't, it does. Okay, so again, when that punch comes in, I block inside, chop, drop, and I roll right on top of his leg, pushing his body into the ground. So there's your part two series of things you should know about Kung Fu, a sample of application from Tiger and Praying Mantis and the White Crane. Good luck.